So let's continue our conversation about Cimabue, Giotto, and Duccio. I love to pretend I'm Italian. And turn here to Giotto, who is Giotto di Bondone, which is the coolest name ever. Okay, There's, they begin by citing a famous writer who was also an artist, but he's best known now for actually writing chronicles, histories of the art of his time and right before his time. And he tells the story that Cimabui discovered a talented shepherd boy, Giotto di Bondoni, and taught him to paint. But the twist in the story is that Giotto will outdo his teacher. Quote, not only did the young boy equal the style of his master, but he became such an excellent imitator of nature that he completely banished that crude Greek, that's Byzantine, style and revived the modern and excellent art of painting. In other words, Vasari is going to live at a time when, at, in the Renaissance, where the, the artistic values of the Renaissance has made people turn against Byzantine art, has made them reject it. And he's saying the one who first started that rejection was Giotto. So note this, he, he may have trained on murals at the prestigious Church of St. Francis in Assisi very important point when he go when we go ahead to his major fresco cycle but i'm jumping ahead of myself i want to stay here with the altarpiece so let's scroll down here's giotto's altarpiece and what they're going to do is they're going to analyze why giotto is a turning point by comparing and contrasting him to chimabui's that we just looked at Compared to Cimabue's Virgin and Child Enthroned, Giotto's altarpiece of the same subject, painted about 30 years later for the Church of the Ognissanti All Saints in Florence, exhibits greater spatial consistency and sculptural solidity while retaining some of Cimabue's conventions. So what I want you to learn how to do is what I'm going to show you right now. They, the textbook authors just made a claim about how we should look at Giotto's art. It has greater spatial consistency and sculptural solidity. What we should do is say, what do they mean? Show us what they mean. And that, by the way, is what you should do when you write about art. You make a claim, you say, show what, I'm, what you mean. Spatial solidity. Well, start, I'm, I'm, let's start with spatial consistency. Look here about the viewing angle. You're looking directly at her knees <laughs> and the baby Jesus and her body. And there is no competing pull down into some other spatial world the way we saw with Chimabui. And in fact, the angels seem to inhabit the same spatial the spatial reality that she inhabits. They stand to the side, they peek through the little windows in her throne, and there's a ground plane that everyone seems to share. The angels are kneeling on this ground plane, and we feel as if this is the solid ground that all the figures are standing on, even as they go back, because they're further back, and the steps seem to actually align with the movement from that ground plane up and back, up and back, and we see how the throne goes back, and we're not popping our eyes in different directions the way we were with Chimabui. This is spatial consistency. And then the other thing they talked about was solidity, right? What was their phrase? Sculptural solidity. They're referring to the bodies. Look at how these angels actually seem to have bodies. They have knees, they have shin bones, they have thighs, they have shoulders, and they have tummies that are slightly round. And most of all, the Virgin Mary has a solid body. We see that because of the way Giotto has very carefully modeled her blue drapery so that the darks meet the lights in a way that describes the form of a knee, the round form of a knee, and the receding form of a thigh. 
She has a lap and the baby Jesus seems to actually be settling into her lap. That's really different than Chimabui. She doesn't have a lap. She has fabric with gold highlights and you really don't feel like there's any body under there. She definitely has toes and she definitely has hands and a face, but nothing else is clearly defined. Giotto's solid bodies make these figures seem less like they inhabit a heavenly realm and more like they are human beings. The little baby feels like a human baby. Remember when we looked at Byzantine icons and the joke was that those baby Jesuses don't even look human because they're so stylized? This is a cute little pudgy baby with those little round hands that babies have. And he's reaching toward her chest. Look really carefully at the way Giotto has created form that is modeled through light and dark He's actually showing her nipple under her drapery. This is the first time that we have looked at a Virgin Mary who is human enough to actually have a nipple for breastfeeding, to be that real of a physical body. Notice how even the angels, who are, of course, heavenly beings, they have halos, and a halo is a symbolic form. There are no halos in reality, but Giotto treats the halo as a solid object and makes those halos obey the laws of physics. This halo is solid. It's in front of the face of the angel behind, so it actually cuts off that face so that you feel that they are actually in this world and of this world. Even though they have wings, they have this human quality because of the space the solidity, the way the light helps to define the bodies in space. Look how the textbook authors talk about it. The position of the figures within a symmetrical composition reflects Chima Bui's influence. So yeah, Giotto kept that. Keep everything symmetrical and organized. Then they say, gone, however, are Mary's modestly inclined head and the delicate gold folds of her drapery. Right, there's no gold on these fabric surfaces. Because in reality, in this world, in the physical world, nobody has light highlights that are gold. Instead, light and shadow play gently across her stocky form and her action holding her child's leg instead of pointing him out to us seems less contrived. And they talk about how, you know, she's colossal, she's really huge. But the main thing is that these are fully three-dimensional beings whose plainly draped bulky bodies inhabit real space. We feel as if we are connecting to them as humans to humans, rather than as if we are confronting some kind of divine splendor of a spiritual realm beyond us.